And first up, we have Mary Lou Long. Good evening, Council and Mayor. Um, I'm Mary Lou Long, as you well know. I had to sign up for this, so you got my name and email. Uh, I was going to suggest that we reflect for a moment before I say the Pledge of Allegiance. Have you ever thought how you got to be here and now? You sit in a respected office in the elected office, in an elected office elected by the people. How could this have happened? Our forefathers established the most wonderful republic with a plan for self-government. When I say self-government, I mean, or I refer to the fact that people choose their government and their leaders rather than dictators taking charge. Uh, other men and women fought and died to preserve this form of government. If they had not sacrificed so much and won our countries, uh, won for our country, we might be under the control of a monarch or a tyrant or Stalin or Adolf Hitler. And if one of those had become the winner of World War II, we might be speaking German. And you might not be in those positions because tyrants and dictators select their friends to put into uh, powerful positions and there would be no elections. <clears throat> uh, you would not be able to run for office in this great country. You would have to be selected by the Fuhrer. We all should show our respect to the flag of our great country. And with that, since I honor my flag and my country and the men that fought and died, for me and you, I now recite the Pledge of Allegiance. You can uh, join me if you like. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I hope someday that we can all stand together in our Norm Dix Building Council Chambers and stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance together as a sign of unity and respect for where we came from. Thank you and good evening. Next up, we have Jane Robolowski. Hello, Council. Um, I'm not even gonna comment on the previous comments, but um, I would like to comment on the the reasons I've been given via email from the council's um, uh, legislative aid saying that you're not having public meetings in person because the public, uh, Kitsap Public Health has advised you not to. Well, I called Kitsap Public Health and talked to the board administrator. And after he was done laughing, he said that absolutely not do they do that. In fact, they required Kitsap Public Health staff to start meeting with the public in September. And as you can see, these virtual meetings are not working when even the city clerk can't stay signed on. A lot of the... Um, conversations are limited and broken up and we need to get back to at least a hybrid type meeting and have more staff available in regular office hours when the public needs to go in and get permits and other things it's not even the president said the pandemic is over for god's sakes let's get back to regular in-person meetings if somebody has a, a health issue then of course they can chime in via zoom or whichever way that other places have already figured out it shouldn't be that difficult for Bramerton that's issue number one uh, number two over a year ago me and some of my friends in the community came up with some very low-cost solutions for some public restrooms to be used primarily by uh, unhoused neighbors. And it, you guys just keep kicking the can down the road, coming up with different excuses. Oh, we're gonna give this to another private nonprofit to solve. Meanwhile, we still don't have 
public restrooms. So I urge you just look into your humanity and get some public toilets out there and public garbage cans that people can use on a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Robolowski. Uh, and we don't normally, this is normally like a Q and A, um, but I did want to reply. I know we have a lot of folks who have been asking us when we're going to go back to in-person meetings. And, um, and our, um, our aide is working on a plan uh, with members of administration to develop, um, to develop a plan so we can return shortly um, in the month of October, hopefully, as we've stated to in-person meetings. Thank you. Next up is Kaye Long. I would like to ask that in the future, maybe the funding for Kitsap Transit can make it for a longer bus schedule past 8 p.m. I found it um, that some of the transit services like the 307 in Kingston is no longer available from Kingston to Bremerton. And um, yes, I, I commend some of the past speakers like Jane Lebo, I don't wanna butcher her name, but Jane for speaking up about some of the things she spoke of. And I'd like to thank uh, Councilwoman Anna Mockler who represents Kitsap Transit. Thank you for what you do and, and, and the mayor, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Next up is Kathy T. Bradley. Hello, um, I just wanted to um, first um, thank you all for like hosting these meetings. Um, I very much appreciated like the brief summary at the beginning. I personally didn't know that oils and fats uh, were a bad thing to do. Um, so I definitely appreciate that information and uh, look forward to getting that, that flyer in the mail. Um, and during this session or during this um, public recognition part, one thing I just wanted to bring up like that's important to me as a resident of Bremerton um, that has honestly been on my mind like everywhere that I have lived uh, is public transit and just the ability to be mobile in my city uh, without the need for a car or without the need for car dependency. Um, I would love to see like the previous speaker mentioned um, buses that run late. Um, I would love to see buses that run on a regular schedule. I would personally love to be able to go downtown, um, downtown Bremerton and shop and just like hang out in the parks and go to the farmer's market um, without feeling like I need a car um, to do that on a regular basis. And I also have like family in Polsbo that I would love to be able to visit without um, needing a car to drive only a 30 minute drive. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's really just all I wanted to say is that like me as a, as a citizen of Bremerton, like um, public transportation and less car centric infrastructure and more bike safety um, is, is really something that's on my, on my mind. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bradley. Next up, we have Joe Walter. Hi, am I unmuted now? Yes. Great. Uh, Joe Walter um, uh, from G2 Bremerton Housing Division, uh, formerly Bremerton Housing Equity Advocates. Uh, we're doing something that lots of us talk about, you know, joining forces, working together. So we've unified. Um, and I just want to amplify what um, a couple of folks have said about public transit. Um, I have uh, lots of friends who are not driving cars by choice and others who are looking at Bremerton about, do I want to be here you know, without a car? So maybe that's a thing for the sustainability committee to, to look at. <laughs> um, I, I, I just want to support that idea of, of take it really seriously. I'm thinking about zoning too, that when you build a new um, residence, uh, that there are parking requirements for that. Maybe we can lighten up on those a bit. Uh, but the primary reason I came was um, to talk about the upcoming October 26th meeting, uh, which 
some of you have already said you're going to attend and others will be shortly receiving an invitation to. Um, and it is around um, Jane's issue about uh, uh, what's happening on the MLK block. Uh, and I'll just read a flyer um, to you, which you'll be receiving soon. The title of the event is What Would MLK Do? Join us for a solution-focused community dialogue about basic health and safety needs of our unhoused neighbors on Dr. Martin Luther King Way. Um, Wednesday, October the 26th from 10 a.m. until 2. Um, our focus is on the most basic health and safety issues, toilets and trash. Let's use our collective power to resolve problems that have felt insurmountable. Together, we can find solutions that support the dignity of the homeless folks on the block and the quality of life for everyone in the neighborhood. Bring your ideas, your enthusiasm, your research, your wisdom, and your compassionate heart. This is a hybrid meeting. In-person attendance is preferred and others can attend via Zoom. Um, it is a, a, a long meeting because my fervent hope is that we can come out of this meeting uh, with all of our questions answered and some clear solutions to present to those who can um, make our ideas for solutions happen. And I think it's going to be coming back to you, you know, with people um, helping to answer this question that we've all felt embarrassed and uncomfortable about not being able to, um, to fix for so long. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walter. Is there anyone else for public recognition? Next up, we have Marwan Cameron. Good evening, Council and Mayor. How are you doing this evening? A uh, couple things. The main thing that I want to touch on tonight, and I have not had a time to gather my thoughts but myself and several others were very dismayed at the recent REACT meeting um, that took place. It was very offensive to watch what happened in that meeting. Uh, it appears that the fervor and the dedication of racial justice and equity since the murder of George Floyd has seemed to wane and people don't have the same zeal uh, to do the work as they once protested that they that they did. Mayor, uh, I don't know when this person is coming on that you're, you're bringing on, uh, but this person needs to take direction uh, from REACT and look at things through a racial equity lens. And I'm asking you to not allow them to uh, move the goalpost and move it from racial equity to everything else that is often what is done in this country from the civil rights era on down, where they use stats. Uh, even city council provided stats where black people are harmed, looked at uh, different demographics. Uh, right now, currently, uh, black women are experiencing homelessness in the highest rate. And then all of a sudden, the resources and the conversation switches to every other demographic. So looking at things, especially our budget through a racial equity lens is paramount, is critical, especially in this county and in this city. So I ask that you folks find and tap back into uh, how you were feeling and how you wanted to move after the murder of George Floyd. The other thing that I would add is, as I run a transportation company as the executive director of G2, uh, a couple things are very important. We have several folks that are trying to pay their rent in a city that is has no affordable housing. As such, uh, bus service that ends at 8.30 at night, but they're working at restaurants and other locations, trying to make ends meet, have no way to get home, or they have to pay pretty high rates in order to do so. Same thing with no bus service on Sunday. So I ask you to look into those things and see what you can do about that. Joe Walter from G2 Housing talked about our event in October, and we hope to see you all there. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you, Mr. Cameron. Is there anyone else for public recognition? Okay, last call. Okay, 